G'day folks, good morning. It's a beautiful day in my probably my favourite month. And you are looking at yeah, you know it. It's a bower from a satin bower bird. It's probably not the main bower. Um because they have several of them dotted through their um, territory. Several sort of little love nests, little bachelor pads, but there is probably a main one somewhere near the center of his territory. And, and the reason I know this isn't a, his main one is because they actually paint the inside of the, the hallway, as it were, of the bower um, with um, saliva mixed with mud and other stuff and soot if they can find it and paint it black. And you can see all these blue toys, all these little baubles to show off to his girlfriends, of which he has many. I know that for a fact. There's also a couple of feathers. I honestly don't know where he gets so many of these um, bottle tops. These uh, like milk bottle tops. If I didn't know better, I'd say he uh, sneaks into the shops at night and unscrews them <laughs> if I didn't know better but isn't that awesome now although that's a very cool thing in itself the reason why I'm really totally stoked about this particular bower if I pull back the reason I'm so stoked is because he built it in my backyard I don't mean to gloat, but I reckon you know when you built a successful native garden, when a bower bird builds a love nest in it. At first, there was a few little blue things would turn up, bits of broken pegs and um, stuff like that. The odd bottle top, and it would move. Little blue things would move around. I knew that I had a a bower bird in the in the area. Um, I heard him, you know, that, that falling note that the, the males do. I've seen and heard a lot of the females. But um, it wasn't until after a rainy period and I hadn't been down here for a while, I saw him starting to put it together and now I'm so stoked and so proud of myself. You know, it's not that hard to do, guys. It really isn't. I mean, first you need a backyard, of course. Um, but at first I was only mucking around with this on weekends. I was still still uh, living and working in, in Sydney, only coming down to the to the house for weekends and long weekends and so on, and uh, doing a bit. But this was all this was all um, you know rosellas in the tree at the back. Sorry, I'm always distracted. There are so many birds. I'm really lucky. In the morning, in this in this big old dead gum tree here, there's um, always stacks of sulphur crested cockatoos, corellas, the odd um, pair of galahs. The lady out the back feeds um, feeds the cockatoos seeds and stuff, which is okay, I guess. But you know, I'm glad it's her house and not mine. Um, this what the, what there was. Here was just plain grass okay now this isn't a huge native garden by any stretch of the imagination but there was over there in the corner there was a, a old dead jacaranda here this one just can't kill here the, the jacaranda where my mate built that really cool nesting box who no one's moved into by the way probably a little close to the ground but that just keeps coming back um, this was all just grass, okay, right up to the fence. There was another old dead jacaranda there. I pulled that out, I just collected rock over. This has actually grown quite a bit. Every time I get more rock, I extend the garden when I've got enough bush rock. Um, I've got, believe it or not, this small gum tree is one of the oldest trees in here. Uh, it's all up, it's probably about five years old. Um, so I've got the snake vines taking off. Um, I've got acacia there, I've got a tea tree here, I've got um, a bottle there, 
Westringia fruticosia, bird's nest fern there, that's, that's only gone in probably six months ago. Um, Callistamins, the lily pilly at the back, heaps of um, Dianella cerulea, that's a, a um, Xanthoria, uh, and I've got um, Lamandra longifolia. This beautiful gum tree is just taking off now. There's a, uh, another tea tree about to go in. Banks here are a a gelatin wax that didn't make it, but the butcher birds use it to hang their food in, so I'm leaving the dead thing there. Um, a few other things that I don't know, the kangaroo paw there and, and um, some um, Coria albia, another calistamin, but you can see at its narrowest point, probably only about a metre, a metre and a half wide, at its widest point, it's my mate down the road kept taking his hot rod for a run. <laughs> um, at the widest point here, it's probably about, oh, I don't know, 15, 10, 10 metres, 15 maybe. So, um, permanent water, bird bath there, another one there, which I've just filled up, try and keep the water up to it, that's the one thing that will bring birds back and back and back to your, to your garden, permanent water. This beautiful big um, grevillea here, the reason this one's going off, because that grevillea there is actually um, older than this big one, believe it or not. My mate's dog um, died in Sydney and um, he was selling the house and moving down here. Um, and when his dog died, he didn't want to bury it in his own backyard because then he wouldn't be near it. So um, we buried it in my backyard before we found a house to move into. <laughs> and that's why this gorilla has gone off so well. It's um, feeding on wrecks. Here's one of these beautiful fluffy plants. Just that's a success story. Um, so anyway, look, this is just my backyard, right? And um, I'm lucky. Yeah, there's just so many, so many birds all the time, all the time, and I never get sick of it. And you know, it wasn't just the water-saving element of making a native garden. I just wanted to bring more native birds into the place um, and as a reward for my efforts I have a satin bowerbird who's built a love nest it's got this is a beautiful shady little part of the garden that's why I put this you know you just utilize if you've got a shady area you put shade plants in a sunny area put sunny plants in it's not rocket surgery um, <laughs> beautiful big bird's nest. That started off as a tiny little thing about 10 inches high. Um, with some rocks and stuff. I've got um, bromeliads down the back in there. Had to take a few out. A little tree fern coming back in there. Listen. beautiful. It's a king parrot. I don't see that many of them here. There he is. Oh, beautiful. I'm, I'm glad that Sarah does feed the parrots. So I get to see things like that. So they like this shady nook, and that's why old mate built his bower in here, right under that, or right next to the. Uh, there's a there's an Isolupus nodosa up the back there, and then there's a tree fern. And I'm uh, like I said, I'm just totally stoked. I know it's not might not be that interesting to to you, but like I said, that's when you know you've got success and it's you know some things died and you, you pull them out and replace them and just you know probably about 70% successful 
don't get bummed out when things die. It's not always the soil or your fault. This is all pure sound. Well, um, you can see here when the ants dig up, that's the sand. So every single plant that I've planted in here, I have put a fair, a fairly decent hole and I use native potting mix to get them started. Once they're established, psh, off they go. Yeah, look at that gum tree there. That's 20 foot high now. That was just, just that planted itself, actually. That's grown from a seed. So, fresh water, give it a go, and you might just get rewarded by something as awesome and splendid as that, especially after the fires, you know. They came really close to, to um, my place, and yeah, I won't go on about that. But to know that they're breeding, um, and right, right in my backyard is such a cool thing. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. <laughs> See you later.